I was just looking through some of the old like next step stuff that I have here because I I have just like a sweater hanging in the closet there and I have like fan mail stuff here and I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to make a video out of this to talk about the next step memorabilia that I have specifically this shirt fits me like a glove never worn it probably will never wear it again <laughs> it just feels weird to wear something with my face on it you know like, where am I there I am <phone rings> Another thing that I like to do when I go to my parents whenever I go every now and then is I'll go to their, it's not the library anymore, but it used to be the library. It's just like an extra room in their house with like a bookcase. Anyways, and so usually what I'll do when I go to my parents is I'll go to the library and just like skim through the books and see like, is there anything here that I might want to bring back with me? On this particular trip, I was going through the, the books in the bookcase and I found this. <laughs> And then I opened the box, forgetting that I had, since I had purchased it, started using it as a collection point for all my next step memorabilia, whether it's fan mail or like things that evoke memories from the past. And so I brought it home with me because I thought it would make a great video for me to just like pull out what's in this box. So, look at what's on top. Oh my gosh. Blue Pages of Welcome to the Jungle, episode 101. So the first episode of The Next Step. Wow. I think I read this in a video, a previous video. I reacted to, to the first episode of The Next Step back in COVID, I think. Literally no dialogue at all written here. It was all in the action description. So like, for example, an empty studio, Kate and Chris enter. They chat about the auditions. They do a little warm up together. Kate reminisces about how she misses just being a dancer. Chris agrees. Kate says to let the dancers in. Chris goes and opens the door. You ready? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. And I highlighted the action points that I was in and the scenes that I was in. So this is not normal. They have the scene and then they have the characters listed underneath it and Riley was listed there. So I would highlight the scene that I was in and then my character name to show, oh, I'm in this scene. But because it doesn't mention me at all, it was sort of like you show up and you just kind of do whatever. But little things like this one, this scene said, dance and stretch. And then everyone nervously gets ready, which I didn't highlight because Smart, it's smart for me not to highlight that actually because everyone nervously gets ready is like a, you're telling the actor how to feel about it, which like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel in that moment. So it's interesting how I made that observation. Dancers dancing their auditions to stand up. And so that I highlighted because I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to choreograph something for that. Emily, Riley, stand to the side and whisper at how the others are dancing. So that's an action. So I was highlighting my actions, the things that I was physically doing, not how I felt about them. Again, smart. Like usually it's very specific with what we say and what we do. How we feel about it is up to the actor. The e-girls cross over to Emily. They wonder who this new girl is. Emily is suspicious of her. See, like that was the extent of the dialogue. There is no like, Riley says this line. She's Mrs. National, National Solace. <gasps> she's Mrs. She's National, National, she's National, National, she's National, National, National As the dancer finishes, Kate says they should all take a break and then they'll hold the last few auditions. Michelle enters from the lobby. She asks if this is where they're holding the auditions. The auditions are in here, right? Off of everyone's look at this new girl showing up, we fade out. End of act one. There it is, the infamous line. <laughs> And then I found this. <laughs> if you can, open on camera. Ella, you got it. Oh, she has her address. If you write back. Oh, I didn't write back. And it's stuck together, no! And I tried opening this because I thought it was like the letter was inside here. It's not. I think it was with something else, with another letter, and I completely don't know what this is from. So Ella, I tried. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And it's funny because like I've kept all of these thinking I might respond to them at some point, but 
I never ended up responding to to them because I think like I remember on the tours we would collect those bracelets, which I think I have some in here somewhere. Yeah. Oh my gosh. These bracelets. I remember we would get these thrown at us from like the, we would do the mall tours. That was the first time. That was when these were really big. And uh, people, everyone was making these things. And so we would have people throw them at us <laughs> while we were performing. And then fans would give them to us during the like meet and greet section of that. Just a baggie of these bracelets that I never opened. <laughs> because again, I had enough already. And I would have just like armfuls of these. Anytime a fan would give it to me, I would put it on and I would wear it. Oh my gosh, this is like a little minion. That's adorable. This is, this is intense. I forgot how intense this was. Okay, so this is what I was saying earlier that I lost track of my thoughts. That on these tours that we would do, I think this was the first tour that we ever did. The first like big, big tour. We had, we did like a mall tour across Canada. And then we did like the proper like live on stage tours. And this was the first one we did. I think this was after season three or before. And this dance is on fire. Wow, different time, different time. We would get all these bracelets, we would get all these like stuffed animals and letters and like booklets and things. Like this box is just a few of the things up from the many, many years of gifts that I was getting at that time. And I remember thinking like, I can't keep all of these. Like there's just nowhere in my house that I can keep them. We only had a suitcase to bring back with us to Canada when we were flying and like traveling across uh, on tour bus and whatever. So I was like, I can't, I can't keep everything. So I remember at the end of every show, we would like keep a few things that we wanted to keep and like, like as many letters as possible. But like, my God, it was always so much. And that's why I never ended up responding to every letter. I tried. There was a period in time where I was like properly writing letters back to people, but it just got to be too much. Oh my gosh, this! I can't believe I had this in here. New York, New York. Brennan sent gave me this when he first got to New York. I think this was after... So after season one, near the end of season one, we had like a few weeks left of filming or something, but Brennan had to leave early because he had, um, he had to go to Juilliard. And before he left, he like was written off early, whatever. And I remember he was feeling kind of bummed about that and I felt bad. So I was like, and I wanted to like send him off. So I planned a surprise party with everyone. I was like, let's go to dinner. We'll plan a dinner for him at a restaurant. We'll all meet there. We were all gonna then like have a party afterwards or something at my parents' house that they didn't know about. <laughs> that was a fun, fun time though. Not afterwards, I had to clean up. Um, and I was like kind of grounded, but and I told him like, do you want to go to dinner? Just me and you so I took him there and then the whole cast was there Surprised him anyway, so he wrote me this shortly after when he was in New York. I miss you so much honey boo-boo Also, I wanted to thank you again for the surprises you planned for me It's one of the nicest things anyone's ever done for me You're one of my best friends and I wish uh, you could join me for all my New York adventures You have to come down and visit for a weekend and before we know it, it'll be March and the show will be premiering holy cow Keep in touch, baby cakes. I'll give you my school address this weekend so we can send letters in the mail. How cute. XO, love Brennan. I wish he did that. We never ended up doing that. <gasps> oh. This was the first time I went on Blue Peter, which for anyone in the UK, you know, obviously know what Blue Peter is. It's like the longest running children's show in the UK or in the world, I think. I'm pretty sure it's like a world record or something like that. But Blue Peter is like this kind of talk show, it's live. Hi, cast of The Next Step. We've got Lamar, Brittany and Trevor. Thank you for coming in today. They would have like three hosts on it and it's a kid's show and they would have different like celebrity guests on. They would have like the queen on the show. What is normally given as the program's highest of all it's our gold blue pizza badge. And you might be interested to know you can get into the tower and free with this. <laughs> <laughs> and they would give you a badge that you had to wear. I also have one somewhere else.
Here it is. Yeah, I would not have thrown that out. And so I kept both badges because I, I was like, I don't know what Blue Peter is. It's not like a big thing in Canada. But they were like, no, you should keep those badges. It's like a big deal because to be on Blue Peter, like not many people are on Blue Peter. So I kept both my badges because I was on twice, once with the next step and once with Joe and Britt. And I kept both of them. I lost the backing to this one though, unfortunately. So it's just a, a needle <laughs> pointing out to stab, ready to stab you. But anyways, I've got my Blue Peter badges. No way, I kept all of these. Shit. These were the the passes that we would wear on, on all of the various dance tours that we did. The dance tours were like a particularly interesting part of the show because it was it had nothing to do with the filming of the show itself, but it was like a fun fan thing. An opportunity to perform live in front of an audience and it was always crazy. And what's really cool is that these two are from Big Ticket Summer Concert. Big Ticket Summer Concert always took place on the Budweiser stage, which used to be called the Molson Canadian Amphitheater. I don't know if it's still called that. I think now it's the Budweiser stage. Fun fact about that, that theater, that performance space, is that I went to my first ever concert there, the Britney Spears concert, back in like, probably like 2006 or something like that, maybe 2005 or 2004, like I was very, very young. And I went with my Aunt Lisa, my sister, me, and my mom. We went to this concert and I remember watching Britney Spears perform and being like, oh my gosh, it would be so cool to perform on this stage in front of all these fans. And lo and behold, like, I don't know, however many years later, 10 years later, basically, I performed on it twice which is pretty cool. Oh, and then this was the same year as Big Ticket, we did the tour, the next step live on stage tour, and we had to keep these passes, and they had the, the dates on the back, and they change every year, so like, I wouldn't be able to walk in with this, they're like dated and everything. What is this? A plane ticket from Orlando, and we went to Disney World and we got to like ride some rides and do some stuff and did like a promotional spot there So it was like we filmed for like a week We got to stay in Orlando and like film these things with I think it was with Victoria and Trevor and we ended up doing this like full tour I think that's what that was from And I kept the ticket. I kept my plane ticket. That's kind of cool. I also found these these plane tickets from the various dance extravaganzas, whether it was for like a meet and greet or for pure dance when we taught at those conventions all the time, those were so much fun. Cute. I love this. I love this. It's just like people who were so connected to this show and were kids and so they were just like doodling and like writing letters and being like, I love you on the show and you're my favorite character and can you please tell Miss Kate that I love her too and to be go easy on Daniel and his ankle. <laughs> oh, you know what this is? This photo. These photos, I think. Yep. From season one. So for anyone who doesn't know, like wardrobe and makeup, they, they take photos of your hair and your makeup and your wardrobe to like match for um, continuity which I'm remembering now, I had four outfits on the next step season one, or maybe it was more. We had more street looks, which is like you had your dance looks. Okay, yeah, so this is what it was. It was you had your dance looks on the next step and then you had your streetwear looks. And it wasn't like all digital, like on your phones, they would like print the copies and have them like pasted up along the thing. So we knew, okay, this is your like uh, casual look A or something. This is your dance look B, you know, this is your, second dance look or your first dance look or whatever and this is your like date look and you can see Alex in the background of the shot she's just bomb photo bombing James and Riley date look that infamous first date that they had and I kept them and I was number three on the call sheet that's why it says number three Riley oh my gosh this was a, a rap gift from Brie. She, she used to write letters for all of us. We'd always take these photos every year. 
It was like a tradition. Season one, I think, is when we first did it. Obviously, I like sat on her lap and we took a cute photo. And then season two came around and Brie was like, let's recreate this photo. And so we did. And then every single season after that, we did that except for season four because I was in the studio head. I sat at my desk chair and she sat on me. And so I, wanted, I wonder if I can find those photos. That is Victoria. I know that for a fact. That is Victoria doing a side jeté. And I think this is Trevor doing his like b-boy move. Oh my gosh, this. Okay, well this was, what is a season two screening? Oh my gosh, this was the ticket for the screening that we did, which was down at the Sony Center, is it? What is it called? It was uh, down by the waterfront in Toronto, uh, beside Union Station. I can't remember the theater name. It's changed now, but back then it was something else. And the season two, we had like a premiere of like the first two episodes, I think. And we got to sit in the audience with the fans of the show and like watch it and then do a Q&A afterwards. And this is the ticket. This was the newspaper clipping. When I first booked The Next Step, my, I think it was my Nana, contacted the newspaper and was like, you need to write a piece about Brittany Raymond because she is on a television show called The Next Step and she deserves to have a newspaper article written about her. Raymond plays Emily's younger sister, a level-headed and observant contemporary dancer who is very loyal to her sister. That's a good way to write her. My favorite line from this is, people would want to watch this because it's a great way to show how dancers relate to the other characters on the show. I was just, I always remember for, for PR stuff being so nervous and uncomfortable about answering questions about the show because I'm like, I don't really know what to say. And like, this is like totally out of my element. So yeah, I had a lot of learning to do. And it was like a big deal to be in the newspaper. My Nana was so proud. She had it put on her bulletin board in her senior's home that she lived in and would tell people, you know, my daughter is on a television show. <clears throat> she would do that or my granddaughter, obviously. And it was her bragging rights at the time. And then this, I found this in my thing because I just love the, the notion that there is probably a Next Step fan out there who has or had probably the other half of this necklace. <laughs> so whoever's the other half of this, I still have this. That is crazy that I have all of these things. I cannot believe that. Now to clean up this mess. But I also wanted to say thank you to you people watching or to the fans of The Next Step who were these mega fans who gave me these bracelets and these letters and these paintings. Like, it was so cool. It was always like baffling to me that you guys would spend so much time and energy on these like books, uh, fan mail books and like letters that you would write. And I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now if it wasn't for you guys. I wouldn't be able to, to be going after what I've been going after from in my life. I wouldn't be able to act. Thank you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And also, I'm sorry I never responded to your letters. <laughs>are still a fan and you want like a personalized video from me I'm on cameo which is like you pay a fee and then I take the time to like film a mini video essentially for you and it's personalized you write out you know if it's like for a friend's birthday or for their for Christmas or for whatever holiday and you want to give them a video of me because maybe they're a fan of the next step or they're a fan of me and whatever else you know you I'll, I'm gonna link my cameo down below it's always linked but thinking of like fan mail it's like me kind of giving you guys something else in return for all the support, but also um, it also supports me because it, you pay me money and the money buys me like food and like pays for rent and um, gas money and like petrol card and stuff like that. So <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs>